Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo. We're not doing any gaming today, but we are going to finally be taking a tour of my office, of my setup, all of the stuff I have in the office currently. I'm going to try not to let it go on too long because there's so much stuff in here I could talk about every single piece, not to mention there's even more stuff that's boxed up because I like talking about this sort of stuff. You guys have been asking me for a long time to do a tour of my setup, back before Michelle and I even bought the house, you were asking me about it. And honestly, I like this kind of stuff, which is why it's been kind of hard for me to put it together because I just want to keep rambling. Because, uh, I don't know, I think everybody, every gamer, every collector, everybody who has like a little space for themselves, whether it be a workspace or a play space, uh, a space they share with their entire family, usually you put stuff within that space that has a lot of meaning for you. You know, it has a story and you want to share that story because that's just a human thing, right? Sharing stories. It's like the campfire, campfire story thing. Well, it's like, oh, well, look at this thing and this has this story and that's the reason I got this and this comes from this point in my life. Um, objects can often be traced back to specific situations, specific moments in our life that carry a lot of meaning for us. So, with that out of the way, Nuris, take it away. I thought you were going to present the tour. You know more about this room than I do. I mean, you come up here and play with your toy when I'm not even in the office. Okay. We can stare at the beautiful dog. Yes, you are beautiful all day long. Let's start by taking a look at my actual setup, then we'll talk about the stuff on the walls. So uh, a lot of people ask me about like my panels, my screens. Nothing crazy, uh, LG IPS panel, two millisecond, you know, really good color reproduction for all the editing and, and video stuff you might need. Second screen, this little Asus has been holding in there kicking ass. It's just a 1600 by 900 display, only connects through VGA, so I've got that running to a, uh, an HDMI adapter. It's just been a great second screen. It's not super high resolution. It doesn't have a lot of space, but it works for having like OBS and Twitch stuff open there while I'm trying to play on the primary screen. And it also allows me to have this set up for my PC while I'm using this as the screen for my Xbox One X or for any other um, you know, console stuff I might be doing. So it's been a good little screen. I'd like to replace it one day, move the LG over there for editing and for second screen stuff and have a BenQ of 1440p 144 hertz for FPS. But until then, it's still chugging away, great little screen. The Corsair Strafe, silent keys. Super quiet keyboard, also one of my favorite keyboards I've ever owned. It's just, it's got good feel, man. I like Corsair stuff. Really the problem with that portion of the industry, the hardware portion of the industry, is that just about everybody is making pretty good stuff nowadays. You know, people will be like, Razer stuff sucks, Corsair stuff sucks, but it's all just fanboyism. Like, just about everybody's making good products. Not all the products these companies make might be great, but almost all of them have a couple products that are killer. Corsair has a lot of good stuff. Um, Steel Series, I went with the Rival 310. Didn't regret it, lightweight mouse. Fits my hand perfect, I love the shape on this thing. I've also been messing around with that Logitech wireless one for some stuff and that also feels great. Uh, I've got the Xbox One X. Bits and pieces, little collector stuff. I've got Fallout posters that were sent to me um, by my friend and his roommate, Kato Genesis, his friend, his roommate, Kite. They sent me the follow coasters from the collector's edition they had, and she also made me this. Kite made me this. I love this thing. It's so freaking cool. So that's up there with the rest of my Fallout-esque stuff. Uh, we've got PlayStation Vita, 3DS, but let's actually take a look at the PC because I'm sure that's what you guys want to see. So I've got one of my SSDs mounted up front just because I think it looks cool. Uh, Corsair 850M. Uh, this is the Fantax Entho Pro M acrylic, so not glass. Uh, Zotac 1070. We've got a Corsair... A fan in the back for the LED goodness. And then we've got our brand new AS Rock Extreme 4 Z370 motherboard with the 8700K in there. NZXT Kraken. You can see front mounted radiator and our uh, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LED at 2400 megahertz. So, love this case to death. Um, it's the first like open case I ever owned. In fact, the only other case I ever had my PC stuff in was a pre built Alienware. So, Alienware Aurora. Um, Shit, man. <laughs> Way back in the day, I got it as a pre-built with a scholarship that I got when I was going to college. And uh, from there, I like took those parts out of the computer. I went ahead and put other stuff in the computer. And uh, eventually, that stuff ended up being transplanted with very little old stuff into this. So I think the only thing that was in the old case, the Aurora that's in this case now, is nothing. Um, no, you know what? The WD. There's a 500 terabyte, or a one, one terabyte, one terabyte, yeah, 500 terabyte, one terabyte WD digital black in here. That was in the old case. The motherboard and the 4770K, my Asus Hero that was in here, 
That was actually in the old rig uh, before it got transplanted into this one. So that was the last remaining parts along with the RAM. That was in the old PC. So yeah, there it is. There's my Blue Yeti, uh, Blackout Edition. We've got our Rode boom arm. If you're gonna go with the boom arm guys, which I strongly recommend to get any sort of vibrations from any hardware on your desk away from your mic pickup, um, Rode is like the best ones out there. I tried the cheap boom arms and uh, let's just say it was $20. Not well, not well spent, ladies and gentlemen. More importantly though here, guys, we've got the giant mouse mat and the standing desk. So this desk top is actually just a top that you buy. No holes drilled in it for like the mount. I had to do all that. No holes for, um, you know, like mounting the desk on the stand here, which is actually really easy. It's just a couple screws when you go to do it, but cheap. So you go on Etsy, there's a company. I'll have them down in the description below. They sell these desk tops in a bunch of different flavors. You can get wood that's a little bit more expensive. This is like a coated material. Really good, you know, stays clean, easy to clean, tough, hard, rigid, holds a lot of weight, and it's massive. And it was $140 plus tax and shipping. And that's it, that's it. If you go to Uplift or any of these other standing desk companies, they're gonna give you an electric standing desk with memory presets, because it's so hard to crank up a desk. You're gonna pay a lot of money. And if you have the money, great, do that, you know? I personally don't actually like the idea of an electric one, not just because of the cost, but because when the motor burns out, that's more of a hassle to replace it. This is a very simple crank system that just uses rods and that's it. Like it's, it, there's nothing fancy there. It's simple gear setup. You know, you could easily fix it or replace it if you needed to. Um, so the standing desk was purchased separately and you just mount the top on it. So I'll have the information. Uh, I think it ended up being around the $500 mark. And the big thing is the size of the desktop. So to get a desktop space this big with Uplift or any of those other companies, with the pre-built, all put together, you know, everything there and you just put it together. You're talking $700 range probably after tax and shipping. You know, you save a lot of money by doing something like this, going with the hand crank, and then you get to pick the exact top finish that you want. You know, you don't get all the fancy stuff that comes with an uplift desk, but that's all additional price anyway. So uh, yeah, definitely something I recommend. All right, let's move on and start to take a look at the walls and some of the other collector stuff I got in here. Starting with Gears of War, because Gears of War is a huge part of my teenage years. Uh, we've got the first edition they ever did with NECA for the Lancer. That's really all that can be said about it. It used to make noise when you pulled the trigger, like the chainsaw. It vibrated, it sounded terrible, but it looks beautiful. I love the blood on it, and as a Gears of War fanatic at the time, um, I was really stoked to be able to uh, pick that up while I was working at GameStop. The same thing with this poster I got when I was working at GameStop. I was actually there for the midnight release back in 2008, man. Shit, guys, that's nine years ago. <laughs> that's a long time ago. Um, so I framed this one. It fit perfect into some frames I got for some other stuff. And also Gears of War Xbox 360 faceplate. I have a bunch of these faceplates. Two of them are in here. I've got one for freaking, I don't even know, some random anime game I never played. I used to get them all the time when I worked at GameStop, either because they were pennied out because people didn't buy them, they didn't sell well, or because I actually bought them because I liked them. Um, speaking of that, if we jump over to the Halo stuff... That is actually a Halo 2 one, believe it or not. For the Xbox 360, it's Halo 2 Master Chief with the dual SMGs. It was like a limited edition one that they came out with that came with, oh shit, man. I think it came with like a sticker vinyl for the Xbox, which I just gave away to somebody else because I just wanted the faceplate. But uh, I have like a Halo 3 one somewhere as well. Those are cool. Like I think the faceplates were one of the, the coolest things that Microsoft did at the time with the Xbox 360, that level of customization. Of course, you couldn't use them when they went to the slim model, but I love the fact that I have them, and they're one of those collector's items I'm going to hold on to for a long time. We've got two recent Halo 3 posters, or Halo posters, Halo, no, not Halo 3, they're just Halo posters, uh, that Michelle's brother and sister gave me for Christmas. This one's actually made up of enemies and weapons from the Halo franchise to make the Master Chief helmet. This one, of course, got the little bit of uh, effect there with Cortana being the blank space between the Chief's legs. And then again, the Fallout stuff I've got hanging out here. Um, two Star Wars film-style prints. Love this Darth Vader one. These are on like a really hard printed material. These are, were actually kind of pricey. A friend gave them to me. There was a store in the mall. I don't know if they still do it that you could get like movie prints um, put onto these hard things. Like, like a canvas, you know, but not made from canvas material. And they weren't cheap, but they're really killer. I love them to death. Here's all my storage space. Uh, plus my X-52, which, man, I got to see. This is the problem, guys. We're gonna be here all day. I hope you're okay. I hope, you, I hope you're enjoying your Friday hanging out with me in my office because I could talk about this stuff for hours. This is my X-52. Old school X-52 handed down from my good friend Whiplash. He sent it to me when we were all together in a community playing things like Arma 
uh, Star Citizen Early Days, Elite Dangerous eventually, and he just gave it to me. He sent it over to me, was like, yeah, dude, I'm making an upgrade, you know, take care of it, and man, I just like, HOTAS is one of those things, much like Track AR and, and, and HTC Vive, that you just didn't think you needed in your life until you had one and you played, you know, DCS and flew a, 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 a P-51 Mustang and you're like, holy shit, this is the coolest thing ever, man. Uh, that reminds me, I haven't played DCS in a while. I think I need to boot up DCS, HTC Vive, X-52, and spend a day flying the P-51 Mustang. It's one of the few planes that I can fly reasonably well in DCS, and I love the starter procedure because it's all about getting the throttle just right and actually starting the plane. It's not easy, but it's a lot of fun. First ever foam prop I ever made. Uh, Bill Duran had the blueprints for this, and I decided to try and make my very own Destiny hand cannon. And considering that was my first attempt with not nearly sharp enough tools, you know, I'm impressed with it. I, I like it. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I could do this a second time, and it would be a hundred times better than the first time. It would be more even, it would be cleaner cuts, and it's something I need to get back to, but I never finished painting it. This was supposed to be the devil you know, because that was the hand cannon that actually got sent to me by Bungie in a mail post right before House of Wolves came out. It's the hand cannon that brought me back to Destiny 1 and actually saw me make a bunch of content for the game, so always special to me. Again, these are like storage crates. I've got lots of different stuff in here. Tools in that one. This is a bunch of extra cables. This is the most organized one. These are actually all organized by what they are. So we've got like uh, video cables. This is Nintendo stuff, like old school Nintendo stuff. HDMI cables, uh, Ethernet cables. I've got my HD60 in there. I've got my Track IR in there. This is my Xbox 360 Slim with uh, some random like NES and N64 games that have no space. This was a little tin I got from Loot Crate, I think, that has just a bunch of random tools in it. This is actually my old motherboard and the 4770K in there, and this is also my RX 280 that's inside my Zotac thing. That's all like stuff that I hope I can still use to build my brother a PC at some point. Xbox One Xbox, um, HTC Vive stuff, just boxes. Ninja Turtles though, let's talk about these two killer Ninja Turtles posters that I have that I love to death. These are both on foam board. I have a third one at my parents' house still that is actually for the cartoon film, like they did a film release on DVD. It was three films based in the cartoon universe and they did a poster to look like a movie poster, like, oh, Turtles in Hollywood. And uh, <laughs> it's super corny, really colorful and poppy. Definitely looks as if it was themed more towards kids. Um, unlike, you know, the films which, yeah, they were still for young people, but they were a little bit, you know, more gritty. Same thing with some of the cartoon episodes. But this one is like on its own, right? This is more like the uh, comics, I guess you could say. And they're all wearing the same color bandana, all red, but they all do have their own individual weapons. And look at the, look at the little Krang robots. <laughs> like what? I have no idea. This is just, I just thought this was the coolest thing. They're standing on like this huge exhaust port. My dad got this from a friend he used to work with, all three of the posters. So this one, this one, and then the movie one I was talking about. This one's more like the cartoons themselves. And uh, I just love the colors on this. I love the way the turtles, you know, just like the films, just like the cartoons. And just really good expression in all the characters. Look, look at him. I just, I don't know. I love this piece. In April, damn April, call me yo. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, let's move on and take a look actually at this last, I'll uh, get the Fallout stuff I showed you guys there. This Fallout 3 thing actually has a connecting piece in the bookshelf that we'll get to, but that was a pre-order bonus when I worked at GameStop. This is the biggest piece in this office that needs to be framed. I have to build a custom frame for it or I get one ordered because... <sighs> Let's just say when I went on Redbubble for Simon Stalenhag stuff, I love this guy's stuff. If you don't know who he is, you need to check out his artwork. I'll have it linked right down in the pinned comment. Killer stuff, and I said, I want the biggest piece I can buy. What's the biggest piece on Redbubble? On canvas, it was like 280 bucks or something like that. But oh, I can get a poster for $30. Let's do that without taking any consideration into how I'm gonna frame it. So it's up there with just safe tack right now so it doesn't get damaged. And um, it's gotta get framed one day, but man, his stuff is, oh, man. I had 20 pieces of art from him in my car and I had to pick. That was not an easy decision. I went with this one because I love sci-fi spaceships and he does a lot of sci-fi spaceships, but this one had the most amount of ships. You know, it's kind of like an old shipyard basically. You know, and you've got like the, the sort of retro vehicles driving through here. That's kind of the way his art is. There's a, there's a theme for it and I forget how you call it, but um, just, I mean, look at the colors. 
the designs on these ships. It has a distinct Destiny 1 vibe to it for me as well, which is probably why I was so attached to it. So let's move on and take a look at the bookshelf here. We've got a bunch of random stuff up here, including some autographed TMNT slime and toys. I won that actually. IGN did a thing where you had to pick your favorite episode of the TMNT cartoon and just tell them about it. And I picked the one with the, basically, it's the alien from Alien, from the Alien films. Um, and they mutate from little meatball eggs on the pizzas. And I told that story and it got, I got picked. And I was like, holy shit, I won something. And uh, that's autographed by the voice actor for Donnie in the uh, in the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles they did. So, collector's edition guides plus random trinkets everywhere. Of course, Doctor Who. I believe this is the. I'm not even going to say what number Doctor because Doctor Who fans will flame me so hard. You guys will know. I can't remember. Um, two limited edition vinyls, Suicide Silence, the Acacia Strain Continent. If you guys listen to that type of music, the Art of Titanfall. Hell yeah. All of the Gears of War Collector's Editions guides, except for Gears of War 4. Because all of these games came out back when I used to spend way too much money on video game stuff. Um, Killzone 2, because Killzone 2, man. Talk about one of the most hyped games of our generation, of my generation anyways. Um, you know, the engine. To go from what Killzone 1 was to Killzone 2 was just like, damn. I was stoked for that, beyond belief. No idea why I have a Resident Evil 5 guide. I think I got that for free. Mass Effect 2, again, I think I got that for free. Um... Fallout 3 Collector's Edition Guide, Fallout 4. We've got the art of Bioshock 2. This was actually in the Bioshock 2 Collector's Edition I do have. Uh, D&D, one of the more popular editions. This is like a really nice collector's guide my buddy got me for Christmas. Just last year, actually, I think. and uh, Or for my birthday, I can't remember. I've already got it bookmarked. I've been wanting to do D&D campaign for our little group that plays Minecraft. All my close, my real-life friends. We all play goofy games like that together still. We love adventure games and, and storytelling all together so i wanted to do that i did one session actually and it went pretty well we just got to get back together try and do another one and i need to spend some more time learning and you know actually having all the numbers and the characters so we don't have to spend time looking through the book that was the big thing for me to actually start studying that this is super old my dad got this from his friend at work he had a friend at work who was such a nerd i can't even get this thing all the way clean it's like stained it's so old but it's it's kenny it's kenny man who killed kenny <laughs> oh god south park so there is the fallout 3 thing i was talking about uh this was again was a pre-order bonus you could give to people if they pre-order fallout 3 man i hyped that game so hard to the customers i was a good salesman because i loved video games so while everybody else at gamestop when i worked there was kind of bitter and miserable about video games because they worked there for too long i was just like yeah dude fallout 3 holy shit it's gonna be so cool i can't wait man oh god i just fall out did you play the old fallout blah, blah, blah. and i would like sell pre-orders left and right so i was good at my job there as much as pre-orders can go suck a big one, especially today, I was good at my job. Assassin's Creed still in the plastic. This was just a steel case for uh, ordering pre-ordering Assassin's Creed 3. The last Assassin's Creed I was actually excited for uh, outside of Origins. <laughs> that disappointed, unfortunately. This has a funny story. I can't not tell this. Okay, so Gears of War 2. I told you guys how hyped I was about Gears of War 2. My little group ended up playing like 3,000 hours of Gears of War 2 online, even though the netcode was absolute shit. And uh, everybody who worked on the game will tell you <laughs> to this day. This was when I worked at GameStop, though. I did not in release. We had these steel cases that came in for display. And, of course, display stuff, if you worked at the store, it would either get trashed or you give it to a customer for a pre-order or somebody who was, like, always pre-ordering stuff or you'd hold it on to it for yourself. So I kept a couple of these for my brother and I. And I put Gears of War 1 in here. He, you know, wasn't going to be able to read this right off the bat. I walked into his room. I threw this on his bed. was like, yo dude we're playing right now and he's like why he like takes out the case <laughs> takes the game out doesn't think anything of it puts it in the xbox boots it up it's gears of war one he looks at me like i'm never talking to you again so fun fun prank with that one uh metal gear solid saga this is like a it's a dvd with like stories and stuff about metal gear Sol solid this is the second volume i never even had the first one this is the halo 3 essentials that came with the halo 3 collector's edition which was the helmet um, which again is in storage lots of little collector's edition pieces art of dead space the art and design of gears of war which was with gears of war 3 there's art for two more stuff up here guys the art for uh, arkham city which was the collector's edition with batman that i have laying around resident evil 5 print which i think came with that guide which was probably why i ended up getting it um and here's like the graphic novels that i own deadpool pulp year 100 i like a lot of the batman like alternate reality crap um, plus a lot of like little random ones that I read like stitches I would just pick up fun stuff and just see if it was any good or if I enjoyed it lots of little maps and guides so, so much stuff guys 
Uh, there's my Xbox 360 collection. A little bit thinner than it was back in the day. It used to be a lot larger. I got rid of like some of the games. It just, a part of me wishes I held onto this stuff now, but a part of me was like, you know, whatever. I was going digital. A lot of people were, um, you know, the few hard Xbox One games I own. We, uh, here's like the only PC games I ever bought on hard disk. Gears of War, Crisis, Warhead, Counter-Strike, Source, Crisis, the original Crisis. I did actually have a PC that could run the game on like high settings back in the day. Old Republic, um, original Xbox games back here. Play, Killzone, told you guys I was hyped for Killzone. Dude, this game right here, guys, let me tell you. If you want a party game, like if you want to get together with a group of people, four players, buy an Xbox, or if you have an Xbox, get four controllers, pick up this game. It's a destruction derby game with like trailer racing. This game was fucking dope, dude. Like seriously, one of the best games out there. It had first person, you could paint your cars and upgrade the cars. Like this is, in my opinion, one of the best test drives ever released. They made a lot of test drives. Test drive was a popular series for a long time. You know, the destruction was a big part of the game. This game just killed it though. Figure eight races, jump races, like you're, you're towing a boat. There's a bus race where there's one big bus trying to kill all the other cars. It's so good, man. Oh, God. Like, when you talk about old games that killed it, that is one of them. Um, hold on. Let's move some of this because there's some other games back here. Freedom Fighters. Yeah. You guys, if you know Freedom Fighters, you know Freedom Fighters. Roadkill is an amazing Grand Theft Auto-esque style experience where you're always in a car just tearing shit up. Great music. Uh, disturbing radio stations. Steel Battalion. I do have the controller for that somewhere. We've got Max Payne down there. Uh, and Max Payne 2 as well. Also, I've got Max Payne 3 in here somewhere. Just, you know, these are all the games. Collector's editions for Gears of War, Splinter Cell, all the Splinter Cells. Like, I mean, those are just those are the games I played back in the day. Halo 2 Steelbox, which is unfortunately in really rough condition. I wish it looked a lot better than it did. Uh, a lot of films and stuff I have. Teenage Team 2 reprint, you know, Fifth Element, Rambo, Wanted, Limited Edition, Band of Brothers, so much yes. The original Star Wars trilogy on VHS from my grandma. Oh, here's my Lawbreakers Collector's Edition, which is actually one of the sickest Collector's Editions I've had in a long time. My Street Fighter IV arcade stick still in the box. Here is a Death Smiles faceplate. Uh, here's Halo Reach Collector's Edition stuff. There's Brothers in Arms, Dead Space, Halo 4. Uh, just so much stuff, guys. A lot of books that I have, including Happy Birthday to My Brother, by the way. That's one of, his, uh, one of the earliest books he actually printed and wrote. Uh, Halo books. I got some Salvatore. Way, way too dry fantasy for me to read, man. I can't do it. I just can't do it, guys. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, I could sit around and talk for the rest of the day. I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you enjoyed this this look at my setup. There's more stuff we can talk about. Maybe we'll do like individual collector's edition piece discussions in the future. But that'll do it for now, guys. I'm working on the new show. It's getting there. I'm not going to pretend there's a release date for it yet. I just want to make the first episode everything I want it to be. And we'll go from there. Hope you guys have a great Friday. A fantastic weekend. Now, Reese, say goodbye. I'll see you guys in the next one.